Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 103. This is Twip. Hey folks, welcome back to another This Week in Photo or Twip Pro Community Photo Critique. We got a mountain of images this week. It turns out the community really, really, really likes the minimalism topic, and we got a lot of good ones in there. Troy, did you see, did you see the crop that came in this week? I did. I did. I was going through, you know, because we, we play with a couple of them to edit, and uh, I had a hard time picking which ones I wanted to play with. And I had a really hard time picking a favorite. Uh, there's a lot in here. Yeah, there's right? a lot of great images. Yeah. yeah, and I love this. I love this topic. So this is this is going to be a joy to go through and critique. Um, and it was, you know, it's going to be really difficult to pick a favorite out of all these because they're okay. all really good, right? Yeah, mostly difficult. I already picked one. I I have a favorite. Okay. I I do. Okay. Yeah, okay. I all do. Right. <laughs> well, I, I actually have three favorites. I have one. I well, I have three fra favorites ranked one, two, and three. So ooh, hopefully, you're ooh. number one. I'm not going to talk about two and three because this is a binary show. <laughs> so right, right, right. You know, so well, hopefully, your number one matches my number one. Um, and you're going to go through and and pick a couple of these and do some quick tweaks and stuff like that on them, right? I am. Yeah, I've got I've got two images. Basically, we're just going to show some retouching techniques and, um, you know, how to put a border around an image. Like yeah, we yeah. got to talk about that. God. <laughs> the corruption <laughs> continues. The corruption, <laughs> the pollution. I just wanna, I'm just poking the tiger. That's all I'm I doing. Know, I know. I know. I know. I know you. I know. I know. I know. All right. We'll see you dive in. Oh, special occasion. This is the, the first show that we're sharing the critique out of the new uh, Twip Pro community. Instead yes. of using the old platform, we're on the new cohesive platform. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. Everything's an experiment, right? Everything's an experiment. <laughs> everything. Yep. until I, I consider everything an experiment until it's successful and repeatable. Once it's, once it's successful and repeatable, then it's no longer an experiment. You can put that yeah. in your utility belt and move on to the next experiment. Well, you know, I was I was thinking because we're redesigning the new F64 T-shirts this year, for this year. And I thought about about using that phrase because mm -hmm. it's 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 so important. It's mm -hmm. such an important phrase because as photographers, we're constantly experimenting with lighting techniques and editing techniques. And we've got to be we've got to be happy with where it's at as opposed to, oh, I've got to achieve perfection. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. every everything. So a little bit of Frederick brilliance in there. Hey, so. hey, thank you. But I, <laughs> I don't take credit for that. I I blame it all on the scientific method. <laughs> That's what it's just right. It's just the scientific method as applied to everyday life. Let's go. All right. Speaking of everyday life, let's dive into the community here. Yeah. Look at that beautiful community. Oh. Sexy, Every so time sexy. I look at it, I go, ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those? Where's those sound effects or those claps? Or you know, I could do that, but then I know, I know, but then I'm not. It's a <laughs> very corny. Yeah, just, just imagine. Yeah, yeah. But you gotta, you gotta have on your shoulder like somebody that you admire, and like, what would so and so do in this situation? Would so and so add like with Idris Elba? If Idris Elba was running a site, would he have sound effects on there? Probably not. So <laughs> I'm not doing. It. That's the reason to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dare to be different, Johnson. Nobody else. <laughs> all right, here we go. Look at all these beautiful faces on the right there, the recently active members. Uh, okay, here's the community, and here is the post I just threw in there 40 minutes ago um, that's showing all the submissions that are in the critique form. Right. So right. let's start with number one. This one's from Alicia. All right, what do you think? I... I love this image. This is um, at first I didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, because it's very abstract. So for me, like right away, I looked at this image and I thought, I, I, I like the colors. I like the shapes. It's it's kind of feminine. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. And then as I brought the image up bigger, I realized it's a hillside with trees. And so that super subtle color in the background, mm -hmm. um, the, the form, the nice composition where we've got the hillside on the lower thirds and then the sky really adds a lot to this image. And I I really don't have anything to add to it other than maybe smoothing out some of that noise that's in the sky. That was a, that was the only thing that was bugging me, too. It doesn't really bug me and because I, I, I have to look at it again because that noise could be knowing Alicia that that could be intentional. 
right? Of course, yeah. She's I mean, a, it, she's it, a very it, accomplished photographer, and she wouldn't submit something that had noise in it that wasn't intentional. So I think I think she wanted that in there to sort of break up that that the smoothness of the sky to reflect the the high frequency of that horizon line. Maybe I don't know. Right, right, and because we're getting very artistic in our topics, mm-hmm. I think that yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like the artistic direction. I mean, we'll, I do too. we're a pendulum, so we'll swing into the other direction <laughs> later in 2020. It'll, you know, it'll all be about street photography or something. And, and then we'll swing back to artistic again. So. Right, right. Well, with our next topic announcement, we're going to swing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We can't, don't, re- yeah, that's a little foreshadowing. Uh, don't reveal yeah. it yet. Come on. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next one here. And this one is from Armando Brook. Well, I love the fact that it's black and white. That's definitely on uh, my favorite list. Um, the minimalism is is wonderful in this. I I'm getting a little confused with the with the heavy border. You know, mm-hmm. the the heavy bottom. You mm-hmm. know, that, now that would be great for like an article with some copy. But as far as like a matted type of, of presentation goes, I think it's a little heavy. I like a nice heavy foot on a mat, but I think that's a little bit much. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it depends, right? I, yeah, because that's very that's almost Polaroid level chin right. on this. When I first when I see it with all that white, you know what I think of the I think it was the second generation, second or third generation iMac that was all white. Remember, it was all white with oh, big chin right. like it this. Oh, right, had that huge base. Yes. yes, yeah. This is what this reminds me of. And and my brain is looking at this. And when I saw it, when I saw it online, you know, the the site is white, so the border kind of disappeared. I didn't really right. realize that that was an intentional border. And then when I saw it in this context, my brain is like, okay, why is that border there? Is it to, if you know, put a little word in the middle of the border that kind of tells you what's going on or adds to the the mystery of it? Or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think it is a little heavy, though. But speaking to the image, I mean, I I love the fact that it's in in monochrome, which is a little different for Armando. So Mm -hmm. he does usually does a lot of color. Um, I do think we could lose a little bit of the right side of this image, though. I feel like the right side is a little bit too heavy. Maybe take off about half of that. Yeah. And uh, I think we have a stronger image. I like the horizon in the lower third. The boat is is perfectly placed. Yeah. And it's a wonderful storytelling image. And I and I bet it probably looks good in color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But you know, we got to go back to the border again because this is this is bothering my OCD, Armando. So. The border on this shot is different, has a different width on all three, on all four sides of the shot. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Di- that's a, yeah. It should be at least equidistant on three sides if you're going to go with the chin thing. I wonder if well, that's intentional. It should be centered horizontally at least. Yes. It's a little heavy to the right. Yeah. And, you could have more, I, you could have more forehead and more chin, but the cheeks have to be even. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell, I tell you what, I, there's an image in here. I'm going to show you how to do this. Oh, do you want to switch over? Uh, not this image. We'll get to it. I'll tell you when. Okay. All right. Well, cool. All right. Armando, thank you, sir. Very nice. And the next shot up is from Craig Stanfley. Yes. This is the image that I want to put the border on. Just, <laughs> You're just, just evil. Break. You're just evil. <laughs> You're just evil incarnate. But, That's what you are. <laughs> but before we do that... Um, I I really dig this image. I mean, minimalistically, it is absolutely fantastic. And uh, this really also speaks to the uh, the icon, the the iconism, iconism of a brand Mm -hmm. Uh, around the world. We know without words what that can is. Exactly. Yeah, there's several. Can you name like can you can you name four brands like that that just by the silhouette of their mark, you know who it is? Yeah. Nike, Coke. Apple yep. and Tesla. Tesla. Oh, the T. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Huh. There's more. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a def- ton. There's a ton. Interesting. Every, I think every company wants, strives to have their iconography sort of, or yeah. their their logo be, you know, recognizable by just a silhouette. I think that's a design thing. You should ask Kira if that's, you know, do you learn that in design school that when you're putting a logo together, it should be recognizable just by its outline? So. Yeah, actually, I know that to be true because, you know, when you're when you're building a brand, <clears throat> you, and, and, as you know, this as well, is that you want your logo to look good on a lot of things. Yeah. Right. On yeah. print, on cards, on letterhead, on the website, on Instagram, on Facebook, like whatever. So it needs to be simple. Simple is best. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it hard, especially when you if you want to include text in it, 
and in the photography world, like the Twip logo, the square one at least, well, the horizontal version is all text, so that's easy. That can go anywhere. The square one, however, is continuous tone. So that is very, you know, it's it's it can only go in certain places. So usually, right. typically only online. So. All right, Craig Stanfley. So, okay, you want to you want to edit this one now, or yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's just do it now. All yeah, right, let's, let's take do a it. look. I'm going to switch over to your screen. Here we go. Look at take that. It. I got it all waiting there. <laughs> you just can't wait. You cannot <laughs> wait to mess with Craig Stanfley's beautiful work. Craig, let me let me apologize in advance. <laughs> well, I, I realize the border matting thing is a very split topic, and that's that's kind of why I keep poking the tiger with it. Yeah. Um, you know, for those that like it, it's it's really cool. And if you're going to hang in a museum or you're going to do an art gallery showing or you want to present your work for sale, it's nice to show it, you know, finished. Mm -hmm. And this is something that Peter and I worked on when he went to the Festival of the Arts was you know how to finish some of these images that were going to go in frames or on mats and stuff because that's how people want to buy them yeah for sure. so this is this is how i see it this is how i see it finished really? and yes and basically what you do is is you leave this extra space on the left um so that in the entire frame the subject is still compositionally correct so if i was to if i was to move this piece say over here now my subject is dead center in the bottom horizon, and it feels wonky, right? Because this this whole image net, the whole space, the mat and the image on the inside becomes your image. Mm -hmm. So that's why you've got to play compositionally to that. Yeah. So, and I'll just do it really quick. It's a, it's actually really easy to do. We did this a lot for image competitions. Is uh, you want to create a new image. And I already have one set up. So I, I do a square, like a canvas, 4,000 by 4,200 resolution. That is for image competition. You can make it whatever size you want. So I'll create that. And then we'll just take that image and we'll just drag it and drop it in there. And <clears throat> Command T, I'm going to transform that down so it fits. So I'll kind of get it where I want. And this is where you can kind of play with that compositionally mm -hmm. i do like i do like the the top and bottom to be the same so once you drop it in there you're going to grab both layers make sure you grab your selection tool and you go across the top you have these alignment options so i can align it see how it just get perfect. popped vertically yeah. Yep. yeah if i want to move it to the left i can do that but i want to keep it oops let me select that layer and move it back hold down the shift key it'll stay locked so i'll move it right about there so then all i got to do now is select both of these and I'm going to grab my crop tool and I'm just going to crop it. Now, notice on that crop tool, notice my subject is on thirds right there. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, yeah, nice. So now that image is basically matted, it's done. And then if you wanted to put a key line around it, which is very optional at this point, um, I would select that top layer, which is just the, the basically the photograph itself, right? Mm -hmm. Go to layer, layer style, stroke. And then you can see right here where it says color. I've already done this, but you would basically click on that, select the color that you want to choose. And then now I can control the size of that stroke. Oops, I got to say OK. So I can control the size. Now, here's a, here's a trick if you're going to do these key lines. You want to put it on the inside because if you put it on the outside, it rounds the corners. Oh. So make sure you put it on the inside. And then I, I go super minimal, like... Just four little, or just five a hint, just a little hint yep and i love to turn the opacity way down so the only way let me get off of this that you're really going to see that is if is if oop, there we go is if you were to come in really close mm -hmm. and because obviously a white key line isn't going to work on this so that's why i would do red or i would do a gray or something and then it gives you the option in this case like if i want to change this background if i want the background to be a different color um, I can do that. So let's say I want to make the background like let's say just a dark gray. I can just I can just change that really quick. Nice. And there's you know, I'm your... curious. I'm curious to see what to hear what uh, Mr. Stampley thinks of this <laughs> border. You know this this off off uh, balance border around his image. So Craig, yeah. comment comment in the community on the on this post with the gallery of all these images for the critique in it. Let me know what you think, or just comment on this image over to the yeah. Let me switch yeah. over to the screen. So there's a little comment area. If you click on it, comment in here and let us know what you what you think of <laughs> Troy Miller's uh, <laughs> surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that. I did that for the border lovers, not for the border haters. 
I'm not trying to convince anybody. <laughs> just right. want to show you some options. That's all it don't is. Don't backtrack. Right? Don't backtrack. Oh, don't try to put it in the box. <laughs> Look, I love it. I love it. I don't need. I'm not trying to convince you. And you yeah. know, no, it's cool. I love. That's what. You, that's the great thing about this stuff. It's you know, there are no correct answers, generally speaking. Yep. Yep. Just a bunch of tools. A bunch, a bunch of, tools. of tools and experiments. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Thank you, Craig Stampley, for that. Next shot is from Freddie Sedano. I knew this. I, I knew this was a Freddie without even looking at it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> without even without even looking at the caption and seeing who it was from, I knew this was Freddie Sedano. So, what do you think? I love the I love the rim lighting of this for one, and you know the the toy thing. I know I like the theme that he has in place. You know his his sort of personal style is putting toys in in different and interesting positions, and you know sort of the quirkiness of it. I love that, but. I love this this rim light on this shark. You know, I love it. I think it could have been, you know, the the um it's a little I don't know for me. It's it's hard because I, I like it like it is, but I want to see less teeth in in the shark. Like if the if the midtones were a little bit darker so that it's a little mm -hmm. less obvious that this those are teeth on the right side. Um you know, and it's more then it becomes more graphical and you could still you still know it's a toy cuz nothing has a surface like that. But it just, you know, I don't know. Either show me the teeth or don't show me the teeth. Right, right. Or more, you know, more of a, a silhouetted outline all the way around. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Um, I feel like, you know, this this particular image, like I love the subject matter. I love the outline, the minimalism that's there. Uh, anybody that's that's into, you know, Lego or these type of toys is going to recognize this immediately. Yeah. And that's that's awesome. Um, the all that negative space that we have in the top of the image, it just doesn't add to this image at all, unless you're going to use it for copy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going if you're going to do that, um, throw some copy in there, throw something in there, throw a background in there, something super simple. Um, but for the most part, like just this image by itself, I would just I would center it in the frame and I would crop it. Mm -hmm. um, so like whatever space you have left and right, I would do that all the way around. And then, and then it, it's it's it seems to me that it's sitting on something, so the the highlight across the bottom is interrupted. Yeah. Is interrupted, yeah. And so to carry the story of the shark, right? Like it should be free floating in the ocean. So I want to see that highlight all the way around. That's yeah. that's how you would shoot it, even for a commercial shoot. I think that you would want. So that. if he if it was physically not <laughs> able to do that because of the way the toy is constructed or whatever, you're. Excuse me, you're saying he should have photoshopped that in there or he he should otherwise recreate that bottom highlight? Yeah. Yeah, you could yeah, you could easily uh well I say easily. Um but you could bring that highlight in there. You could just grab the highlight that's on the left and and drag it in there and stretch it out and warp it and um put it in the bottom and blend it. But it it would take a few minutes. But yeah, that's that's definitely something that you'd want to do. Okay. Cool. All right, Freddie Sedano. Thank you, sir. Freddy, 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 Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> what was dun, that? Dun. What was that horror show? Dun, 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 With dun, Freddy, dun, dun. Uh, Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Next shot is from Ernest. Oh. Mm hmm. I so love this. Yeah. This is fall. Gonna oh. smell those leaves. Oh, this makes me just want to go outside. That's it. I'm off. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a motorcycle riding through a bunch of leaves on a motorcycle in this in this area. Uh, we awesome. Oh man, look at that bouquet. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm alluding to an article that, that we've been chatting about in Twip. Um, I absolutely love this image. Uh, oh, the, oh, I know the, I know the post you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> to bouquet or not to bouquet? <laughs> to bouquet or not to bouquet? Yeah, yeah. I love when we get into those those discussions that are completely one hundred percent subjective, like bokeh, you know. And uh, you know, there there are people that yeah, you know, there's just strong opinions. I love strong opinions in there that are yep. that are. If you look at them from, you know, myopically, it's valid. But when you look, when you zoom out and look at, okay, these are just a bunch of tools and anybody is free to do whatever the heck they want with whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all moot, yep. right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, speaking to this image, Ernest, fantastic image. Um, a couple things that I, I would look at, first of all, is the, the leaves in the top left above the branch. I would I would blur those. I would get rid of those. You know, I would take those down or clone those out. I think that they're distracting from your minimalism. Um, and then the highlight at like two o'clock, top right corner. Uh, 
mm-hmm. definitely take that that bad boy out. Because the one thing that we really want to focus on in minimalism, <clears throat> and and a lot of images anyway, is that we want to bring our attention to our main subject, and those things are detracting mm-hmm. from our main subject. Yep. Um, and then just the highlights on the tips of those leaves. You know, it looks like maybe a little bit of sun was you know catching those and and if they're thin or something so yeah. the light is really coming through so i would i would take those down or, or just clone those out i like those on there though i mean i, I agree with that that would the smudge um bokeh smudge on the upper right mm-hmm. but i like the tips on those really uh, yeah it's like fingernails it feels like there's fingernails on those leaves and they don't belong there yeah i don't know it's either that or it, it feels like maybe it was well, it's fall, so clearly it's not ice. Well, maybe it's water. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of yeah. like it in there because it, it, it adds a little bit of interest. It makes, it makes me think, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, and, and, and there you go, right? Like, I'm going to buy the version of this image without those. Mm-hmm. And Frederick could buy the version with those. Yes. So welcome welcome to retail, right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> trying to welcome to trying happy. to please everyone <laughs> with your work. Yeah. Well, welcome to my world there you go <laughs> yeah yeah hey a wedding photographer man that's oh. that's you're always trying to second guess stuff um well with wedding photography you only really have one person to please right the bride right and the bride's mom and the bride's mom <laughs> well whoever's writing the check <laughs> i do i do love this image i think this i think this fits minimalism super well and i love the color palette oh the color palette is just absolutely fantastic for sure yeah i love the, the burnt orange you can't go yep. wrong with burnt orange Yep. Yep. And good use of a shallow depth of field, you know, on that lens. That's that's fantastic. That's a great way to work. Yeah, I love I love shallow depth of field, you know. Oh, yeah. I just I, you know, I, I don't care what anybody says, whether it's in vogue or not. I love shallow depth of field. I used to say life in general just looks better at F1.2. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> and I would spend the money for like a an 85 or a 50 millimeter 1.0 for my camera if I could get one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. All right. And this was Ernest. Thank you, Ernest. Moving Brought right up. along. Next shot is from Joshua. <laughs> Summerfelt <laughs> self portrait. So I made a comment. Not everybody's going to get it, but this reminds me of the face of Bo. The face of who? The face of Bo from from Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Now you're 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 <laughs> in uh, <laughs> you're in strange, weird nerd territory now. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's really good i i i dig this you know i think this is super cool i i almost wish that the chin and the little bit of data at the bottom was taken away i wish that that was cloned out mm-hmm. um just just the eyes the nose and the mouth and i think this would make a fantastic portrait series Mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. people, right? Like, do a series of this because really, what makes up a person is is the these these elements, right? Yeah. The eyes, the nose, the mouth placement. That's how we recognize people predominantly. Yeah, that would be killer. Um, that would be killer to see a whole grid of just different faces. Yeah, yeah. and I bet we could recognize almost anybody yeah. that was in there that we knew, right? Yeah. Like celebrities or family or friends or, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. that. Very cool. Yeah. My I, when I saw this, I'm like, yeah, I love this. I love what he did here, you know, with sort of blowing out the highlights and only leaving the facial detail in there. But I think I want I would want two things if I was going to work on this. I'd want to lose that chin area because mm-hmm. that, that doesn't look like it really needs to be in there. It's a little smudgy down there. I don't think that's really adding to anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you really you just need the facial features. Um, and then there's some detail off to the left there. I probably would have nuked that out of there. Um, and then I would have maybe experimented and tried one that's really high contrast, you know, where this has, this has some continuous tone in there. So you know, lots of grays and blacks and, um, but one that is really graphical, you know, you've seen those like from Maplethorpe. Mm-hmm. I forget who the, the photographer or the artist was that used to do like that. Like lithography. Kind of right? Yeah. Like, like a, a lithograph. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 I'd love to see that. And maybe that's part of this, you know, maybe it's a, you know, it's a grid of four different implementations of this face. One of them's like this, one of them's high contrast, one of them's, you know, got another one, but it's, you know, it's all the same face in there. That would be cool. Yeah. Joshua, I, I think you're onto something. Yeah. You're going to be the next Banksy because you could, I can see this face on a wall somewhere painted like this. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Lovely work. Very good. 
and outside of Joshua's comfort zone too. I don't, you know, yeah. I keep saying that. I don't know that Joshua ha- Joshua has a comfort zone. I think the world is just his comfort zone, and yeah. you know, he just yeah. likes to play with pixels, which is awesome and the way it should be. Can't yep. pi- can't pigeonhole him. So yeah, very very creative, very creative individual, and his head is full of a lot of trivia, a lot of movie trivia. Nice. Oh yes. What did he share? What did he share? Uh, you like Andy Griffith is one of his favorite, favorite shows. And, um, he, he's just, he's worth, he's worth talking to about Andy Griffith just to, just to learn a little bit about the history of it. And then some of the comedy that's in there. Really? But yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Anytime we're talking about movies or something, he's like, Oh, this person did this. And this person, I'm like, I don't remember people's names. <laughs> All right, Josh, well, you need to apply to be on Jeopardy. Make some, money. you got to follow him on, you got to go to his Twitch channel, yeah. uh, low bass guy and, and, you know, hang out with him. Yeah, let me put this in here. Follow Joshua on Twitch. Oh, look at that. Low base guy. guy. There you yeah. go. There you go. Hey, how about this? Uh, I'm going to put a gif on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. How we see. digress. Follow. Let me see. What is follow? There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Done. I just wanted to show off that you could do that with Twit Pro. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Thank you, Joshua. On to the next shot here. Uh, and you'd never believe that Frederick and I talked about how we could make these more efficient and <laughs> I know, and we're only like a third of the way through. <laughs> We can do it. We All can right, do it. We can do it. All right, I gotta speed up. I gotta speed up. But these are good images, and we're not we're not saying anything that's not substantive for the image, except for those ducks, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this shot is from James Glenny. Yes, we knew that without having to, to see the name. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, what do you think? This makes me this. What 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 substance do you think this is? I mean, I want to think it's some sort of alcohol, but maybe it's not. It's definitely some kind of scotch. Knowing knowing him, uh-huh. um, which makes me sad for my Oban is gone. So, <laughs> where is it? In the it's in the bay. Yeah, now, right? <laughs> it was. It didn't. It didn't make it home from Zion. Oh, yeah. Um. So, you know, with images like this, the, the minimalism is beautiful. The subtlety is absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I would like to see even more minimalism in here, meaning the reflections pushed way around to the outside edge. So, you know, more hatchet lighting Mm -hmm. and the same on both sides. That's the phrase I was looking for. Hatchet lighting. That's hatchet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now, you know, you've got the soft box off to the left. It's a little bit too forward, too close to the camera. And maybe there's a reflector off to the right or a wall or something Mm -hmm. that's bouncing in. I mean, these type of shots you need to shoot in total darkness against a black background with two identical light sources way at the back. Um, call it 11 o'clock and one o'clock at the back, right? If the clock's laying on the table, mm-hmm. lighting the edge of that glass, and they should be identical in that, in that rim light. And it should just barely light the edge of the glass all the way around. That's to get hatchet lighting though, right? So yeah, but yeah, that's but not a, a rule. Too, I mean, it yeah. looks like he was trying to. Do, if, I don't know. If, so, uh, James, let us know if you is that you were trying to go for that. Were you trying to get hatchet lighting, or did you were you trying to intentionally to go for the asymmetry of the the highlights on the shot? Yeah, I think you know. I guess really where I'm going at with this, like for an image like this, is those highlights are distracting to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and really, what is amazing in this image is the the color of the liquid. And the shape of the glass. So anybody that drinks scotch or whiskey, like we know what that glass is. We know what what's in there, right? What should be in there. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not interested in the highlights or the reflections of what's in the room. I really just want to see into the glass. So if this was a commercial shoot for a product, um, we want to we want to highlight the shape of the glass and the liquid that's in there, which is what we have mostly mm-hmm. right those hi- i think yeah. those highlights are pulling us away from from that yeah 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 you're right because i find myself trying to uh you know stalk the highlights to figure out what they're reflecting so yeah yes yeah. yes and really what's intriguing in this image is is those amber that amber highlight at the top and the ha- amber highlight at the bottom and the little bit in the base of the glass i think yeah. that is where the the money is in the shot the money shot yeah love it Love it. Hey, here's a here's a slight non sequitur question. Since you're a you're a Scotch aficionado, mm. 
is it is it legal, <laughs> so to speak, to put um, uh, what do you call it? Can you is it legal to put ice in a drink like this? <laughs> well, you just opened up a can of worms, my friend. Because <laughs> uh, for Christmas, I got some like like, like uh, Scotch stones that you keep in the refrigerator, and then, yeah. and and I got some chrome ones as well that you know for for depending on the guest that you're entertaining, I guess. Right. Well, you know, think of it this way. When you drink a scotch or whiskey warm, you get the full flavor of it. Mm -hmm. If you if you can't if you can't stomach the flavor, then you make it cold and diluted. So, (laughs) okay, say no more. more. (laughs) Those two words just speak volumes, cold and diluted. Yeah. I don't think I want anything that's cold and diluted. (laughs) Does it sound pleasant? Uh, You know, (laughs) All right, cool. All right, moving on to the next one. James Glenny. Thank you, sir. All right, next shot is from Kai. Oh, I love this. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. This this is the kind of stuff I drive a long ways off the highway to go find. This is what you pull over when you're on this little motorcycle road trip, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, you're going to shoot that. You're going to take a break. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely amazing. Um, you know, just just looking at it just now because I hadn't seen it before, I, I I think we have too much foreground, right? Like we just don't need that much of the road, really, or you know whatever that lot. Yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. You know why I like the road in there because it's it's almost the same amount of of vertical space. It takes up almost the same amount of, of vertical space as the the grassy or the dead grassy area that that the building is sitting on. And then right. you have a, the the whole sky back there, which is you know the other. Yeah, you know, yeah, the I can other, see that. I don't know the other part of the image, the other percentage. So it's like big, small, small, and then you get this this image shot with a wide angle lens, presumably right smack dab in the middle. Right. Yeah. I guess the problem that I'm trying to solve by cropping the bottom is that we have this sort of very very similar tones throughout the image, and it's it, it, obviously the building is the center. We can see that, mm-hmm. but but tonastically. Um, the building doesn't draw my attention right away. I mean, the, the lower left corner and then is, is sharp. The lower right corner is soft. So that's on that thing's running on an angle. Yeah. Um, it's almost the same brightness or tonality as the building. So, you know, these are one of those images where, yeah, this is, this is really cool, but I'm, I'm looking around the image outside of the building, Mm -hmm. you know, for my, for my main hook. So, yeah. Maybe that that some, may be the wedding photographer in you, the portrait photographer. Yeah, wanting yeah. A, you could put a bride and groom on the left and right of those poles. <laughs> there is no doubt there. I am. I am not going to deny that at all. Yeah. Um, You're like yeah, something's there's... missing. I put can't put my finger on it. What is? <laughs> <laughs> but it is beautifully minimalistic. I love the fact. I will say, and I and I and I, having seen Kai's images enough, I think it's intentional. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I can read. That it says office mm-hmm. on the building. The pole is between the I and the C. Yeah. And it would have been so easy to step left or right, even the most slightest little bit, and block that out. And I appreciate that it's not. Yeah, because yeah, because he could have looking at this image, he could have uh, taken a step. I'm gonna say to the right. It was I can't get my physics right, my parallax. Um, but to the right to put that that center post right in the middle of the center post on the ceiling on the roof there. And, right. and the space between the two left and right black poles would have become more even, right? Cause right, right now there's more space between the pole and the building on the left than there is on the right. So if he wanted that full symmetry, he could have easily done that. I wonder if he didn't intentionally just to add a little bit of tension in there. I, and, and that's what I, yeah, that's, that was my initial thought was, yeah. you know, having seen so many of Kai's images. And I think this is really a good lesson for all of us, you know, when we're taking an image is that you have compromises. And I think that keeping the words in there is an important compromise for the symmetry of the building. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If for me, if I was standing there in the symmetry of the building overweighed the sign, I would simply take the sign out. Yeah. So it didn't, it didn't become distracting. So another you can, you one. You easily things. move the sign too. Cause even the, even the text on the sign is asymmetric. <laughs> In asymmetrical yeah right? yeah yeah it's not even balanced right no. like it's off to the side it's above the door it's above the door there's too much space to the right in the sign so <laughs> if you want a true symmetry he could have just photoshopped that office word to be the middle and then <laughs> you know the more i look at this the more i like it i i would just say let, let's just crop it in a little bit tighter make it square 
and put a, a fair amount of space around it so it's centered and minimalistic in itself. But mm-hmm. uh, let's let's get rid of all that that space that we don't need and just let it live in that in that square. Yeah, I what dig it. What it's. Was that? This I want to like know a, where like at. a root, route 66, uh, yeah. you know, stopover photo journey kind of thing. Stop Barstow mm-hmm. or somewhere. Well, this is like anywhere California, it feels Yermo. like. Yermo. Yeah. 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 And there's no graffiti on it, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I need to find this and put some on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop lesson. How to add graffiti. Exactly. You know, I think Russell Brown did it. Russell Brown from Adobe did a did a uh, or I think everybody has. I think Florin, yeah, sure. Aaron Nays from Florin has done that. But hey, you gotta have superpowers in Photoshop. Do whatever you want. Yes. All right. Thank you, Kai. Next shot up is from Karen Sweeney. This is minimalist for sure, huh? This is very minimalist. Yeah. This is this is a great shot. This is this is one of those images that right away I just want to crop out some negative space on the right and the bottom. Um, I feel this image is more horizontal. And then it's a the, the tonality is a little flat. It's a really super easy fix, by the way, is is uh, you just bring up the highlights. Don't mess with exposure, don't mess with contrast. The shadows are perfect. Just bring up the highlights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know what's interesting? You haven't said anything about sky replacement in this entire critique. So <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We've only got seven images left. <laughs> I'm trying to be unique at each each one of these sessions. I'm not trying to repeat myself. So, uh, well, you'll you'll enjoy the interview that's going live tomorrow. By the way. Oh, with, cool. Yeah, with Alex Sepko. He's the CEO of Skyloom. Oh, nice. Yeah, we talked about the future of sky replacement. So you should uh, give it a listen, or a watch, or both. Definitely. Cool. Any other thoughts on Karen's image? Uh, no, I mean, it's it's a beautiful image. I mean, minimalistically, it's fantastic, and I love these type of shots. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big, big, big fan of simple, simple, simple. Yeah. You know, we know what it is. The story's there. Um, we just need to change the composition right now. The leaf is dead center, and then just increase the highlights. Yeah. This whole this whole series is a good is a good uh, lesson to newer photographers that complain mm-hmm. about not having anything to shoot. Because they live someplace that's not picturesque, you know. Oh my gosh! It's <laughs> dude, walk out, walk out into a vacant parking lot and just look, look. Eventually, you'll find something. Maybe yeah. it's tiny, but it, there's always amazingness there. Always. Yep. Yep. It's a cool planet. I think I'll stay a while, as if I had a choice. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm of the opinion like there's no intelligent life. Beam me up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or, you know, reboot reboot the computer because this code yeah, is reboot. fragmented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me the blue pill. Exactly. All right. This next shot is from Lamb. Yes. I wonder if that's Lamb in this shot. Well, no, it can't be. He's taking the photo. No, no. You know, th- th- this, this shot right away initially, um, I was... I had to look at it a little bit longer to really figure out like what part of it my brain liked and didn't like and what I, you know, how I wanted to to sort of work the image. Like if it was mine sitting in my library. Um, and what I've, what I've really come to really love about it is the divide of the highlight and the shadow where you've got the background is bright and then, then it's dark on the right. And then you've got that juxtaposition of him, this gentleman shaving on the left layered on top of the highlight. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, I really like that graphically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's less of minimalism to me in the, in the image because there's a lot of stuff going on, but artistically, uh, there are some really nice elements in there. And I like that sh- highlight and shadow balance. Yeah. I think, I think I would have erred more towards cropping in a little bit because I don't, I don't know that I want to need, I need to see that bucket you know, and all that stuff on the right side, and I don't need to see his waist and all that. So I probably would have kept it graphical on right. on the guy that's shaving, right? And kind of maybe cropped up just above his waistline or just above where that table is, and then in from the from the right side to lose that bucket and all that. Right. You know, focus the information or focus the viewer's eye on what this guy is doing. Right now, that's the most important thing in the shot, but I'm distracted by all this other stuff and that that big swath of space, black, dark nothingness on the right side there when you don't necessarily have to be. 
Right. I absolutely agree. And I, and it looks to me like maybe that bucket was even dodged a little bit to bring it out. So photojournalistically, we want to see the bucket. Minimalistically, we don't need to see the bucket. Right. So it just yeah. sort of depends on what is the story you're trying to tell and what category are you trying to fit your image in. And these are things, by the way, that every time that I take images, whether it's at a wedding or a landscape or whatever, I always think, OK, what container am I putting you in? Mm hmm. Um, and then I edit the image accordingly. Sometimes I edit multiple iterations of that and then I find my favorite later. Um, so this one minimalistically, I agree. Yeah, we don't need the bucket. All right, cool. Lamb, thank you, sir. And moving right along to the next shot. And this one is from Laura, Laura Patton. So many black and white. See, black and whites and minimalism go together. You're the corrupter. That's what you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I will take it. Yeah. Um, I love this, this is... shot. I like this shot a lot. I did these kinds of shots. I uh, can I can I channel you? I want to channel absolutely what you may what you may say about this shot. Um, I'm not even going to do my Troy Miller voice, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say you like the shot. You feel like it's it's beautiful. The the processing and just the sort of the sepia warm tones of this shot um, that she's layered into the highlights and shadows makes it feel soft and just nice overall. Your criticism would be that it's too tight and you hate when limbs are cut off. <laughs> and there are limbs cut off in this shot so you would have backed off a little bit to get the entire flower in the shot as much as possible or photoshopped out those those offender the offending leaves or whatever right am i close yeah yeah you're really close yeah i i would have tried to i would have tried to keep nothing exiting the frame mm. um i would you know if i had to you know photoshop uh or you know local manipulation i would have tried to keep everything within the frame um, it, interestingly, though, when she posted this, she also showed the original image that she started with. So for those that are in the community, go check that out. It started with a color image. And I think her edits improved the image dramatically. Mm -hmm. So kudos to that. Um, but looking at the image the way that it is in front of me now, yeah, those are some things I would fix. I would I would also try to increase the highlights in the center of the frame. As opposed to right now, it's brighter on the outside edges of the frame. So that one petal that's perfectly centered, which I love, by the way, mm -hmm. um, I feel should be slightly brighter and let the rest of the flower go a little bit darker. Make that or, guy the, the hero of the shot. Yeah, yeah, because it's the center, yeah. right? And I, and I love that, that 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 is picked and the other petals are kind of falling away. And this is this is amazing. You know, to me, this is this is fine art. It just needs a few little tweaks. Yeah. I dig it. I, I think this is fine art as well. Yeah, I can see this. This this passes the hang it big on a wall with a big thick black frame test, right? <laughs> <laughs> right with a nice mat. Yeah, with a nice mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Good shot. All right. Next shot is from Mark Harris. Yes. You know, Mark, this is this is beautiful. Um, unfortunately for me, living in Southern California. That looks like I'm looking out over San Pedro and it feels like smog mm. out over the water. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like mm -hmm. that's but how unfortunate is that, that that's what we see or yeah. that's what I see. That's what this tells me. Yeah. Um, so you have that visceral ugh kind of yeah. feel. When you look at it. Not and that I the love, image, not that the image is, ugh, but just where you your brain yeah. goes to. Right. And I dig the ocean. I, you know, like I've said before, I don't ever want to be in it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't ever need to touch me, but I love photographing the ocean for the minimalism and the patterns and the reflections and, you know, all those kind of things. So I would just say in this image, uh, maybe do some tweaking on the saturation and clarity and, and, you know, create a little more punch and maybe, maybe just throw a little bit of cloud in there, a little bit of texture in the top. Uh, we almost got through the entire critique. Right? I, not the a cloud, cloud recommendation, <laughs> but texture in the sky, you know, some whisper. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, this, this shot, because it's so graphical and simplistic, you, this, this is great for, um, editorial right so if you're doing an editorial yeah. where there's just one little plane up in the you know, the upper left third there you know this little tiny plane over there adding a little bit of interest yeah or one bird no, or bird. Yeah, yeah no it's so true it's a secondary hook it's mm -hmm. what our brain loves to have now i i, I love the image i mean <clears throat> i i create these anytime i can so 
I'm very drawn into these. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. You get lost in this image. Yeah. But now, that, now that you've said it's smog, now I <laughs> I know isn't that ruined terrible? it. <laughs> I know it's awful. It's awful. In but look at the colors. Like, the colors are great. Going from a nice pastel blue at the top all the way down to the pastel orange at the bottom. But, that's but the, maybe that's you know you're having that visceral anti teal and you know uh, <laughs> orange burnt orange thing that Hollywood does all the time that you hate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It's it's awful that we that we see it that way, you know. That I see I see smog out there or a haze, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's that's what my brain tells me when I look at it. So and maybe that's what it is, you know. Maybe he was going for that. So yeah, who knows? maybe. Who knows? Put a put a container ship out there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or an oil rig. There you go. Yeah, this is off the coast of you know somewhere in China or something where a lot of oh hell are. just off the coast of Cambria or <laughs> Northern California anywhere out there. Yeah, or any any coast on Earth basically. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Cool, Mark Harris. Thank you, sir. Cool shot, Mark. All right. Next shot is from Michael Rhino. Wow. Look at that. I've always, you know, these are all over California, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, as you, if you drive anywhere and look to the left or right, eventually you're going to see a hill with a tree like this on it. And my brain, it doesn't practice what it preaches. And I, you know, I always tell people, if you see a shot that you drive by every day, go stop and get it. Go you know? get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I never have shot this. I always want to do a shot like this with kind of a hill, maybe not sloping like this down the right side. But it, but a person sitting at the apex or crest of a hill with a tree like this, you yeah. know, and a person sitting at the base of the tree with a book or, you know, something like that. Something yep. graphical, really silhouetted and 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 intentional. But. Yep. No, this is this is wonderful. I mean, this is this is minimalism at its best. Um, you know, these type of shots are always fun. And in, in Northern California, this stuff is everywhere. Yep. They are all over the place around mm-hmm. Napa mm-hmm. and Paso Robles and Templeton. And like, it's beautiful up there. There's so many of these. Yeah. Um, I do love the additional of the, fo- the addition of the fog. Like he didn't add it, but I mean, the fog really adds it and softens it and creates it a little bit more mysterious. So yeah. I like that. I initially... I, I kind of want more contrast or more um, density in the in the shadows in the yeah. top half of the image. Yeah. Without without ruining the fog, right? So try to get that that shadow density from the trunk to the top of the tree the same. I think that that would really help. Yeah, I tend to agree. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's and I, wonderful. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta respect you for resisting the urge to, you know, to wanting to put a bride in this shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I just didn't say it. <laughs> yeah, it was there. <laughs> Man, oh my god, a, a bride or someone sitting underneath a tree or walking or kissing in the foreground. Oh yeah, they're walking. Yeah, they're they're walking off to the to the left. Yeah, the groom is leading the bride, walking to camera right. Yeah. Okay, uh, so they're walking away from the tree or walking away from the tree? tree? Yeah, of course, because okay. the tree, the tree is reaching that way, ah. right? So you would, you, I would want more space on the right of the tree, and that's the way that they're going. So the flow of the image is from the left to the right because the tree's leaning that way, okay. or not leaning, but yeah, you know, but it's, it's, it's reaching yeah, that it's, way. Yeah, it's off. It's uh, off. And then it would, on the right side. Yeah. Yeah, and then I would take that little branch that's dangling down out. Oh, OCD! I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I knew it's it. Killing me. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> All right. Well, cool. Thank you, sir. Michael Rhino. And here we go. Next one is from Michael DeRay. That is that is crazy. It's cool. like a micro armored transport right there. <laughs> yes. This is, when I saw this, you know what I thought of instantly? Because, I, you know, this is the way my, my brain works. Um, who is that Paul uh, Verhoeven movie? Starship Troopers. Oh yeah. I thought of Starship Troopers when I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Freddie Sedano, you need to do a Starship Troopers type shot with, with small insects and make them look big. Right, right. Yeah. I you know, this is such this is such a cool shot. I love the fact that that insect is, you know, in the lower left. It's nice and small, like we know it's an insect. Um, and so we assume that it's small because of the the, the shallow depth of field and stuff, it feels that way the highlights in the background are really just messing with my brain. Mm. Um, I, I think they're just too distracting, right? Circles like, of confusion back there are confusing. Yeah. You. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, if if you really wanted to use them, you would get that bug perfectly centered so that he was highlighted mm-hmm. by it. Right. Mm-hmm. Notice I called the bug he. I just I just pick that. Yeah. Sexist. Um, yeah. Uh, but crop a little closer. Right. I don't think we need as much vertical and uh, right space. I'd still leave the insect to the left mm-hmm. half. So maybe a little horizontal on the left mm-hmm. third. Mm-hmm. I like it. Feels like it's walking out of the frame. Mm-hmm. This would be an interesting image to flip horizontally to see how it changes the feel of the image. Because right now it feels like we're crowded to the left, right? Because like, you read from the left. Yeah. But if you flipped it horizontally, it'll with a space behind it, it'll feel like he's leaving as opposed to arriving. And that's, like a, that's a good point. You know, what we learned, what I learned is when in photography school 101 was generally speaking, there are no rules, obviously, but generally speaking, you want if there's a, an object in the scene that's in motion or appears to be in motion, you typically want it moving into the frame versus moving out of the frame. Where do you fall on that? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just the way that Western culture works because we read books from left to right, top left to lower right. Yeah. So <clears throat> we enter in the top left and then we leave in the lower right. So a subject walking down a set of stairs from the top left to the lower right feels like they're leaving. Yeah. A subject walking down a set of stairs entering from the top right to lower left feels like they're arriving. Yeah. And, and that's just that's just, you know, Western culture more than anything else. I wonder if there's any science to the the left to right energy versus right to left energy and if that's related to writing you know when you write you're writing you're creating your words from the left to the right or from the right to the left or vertically you know i wonder i think like compositionally and artistically does the direction that you write have any impact on how you compose your images Oh, I'm sure it does. Yeah, I, I couldn't cite anything, but I know that uh, we did some studies on like like Japanese art mm-hmm. because they they read from what is it right to left, right to left or or up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So their art is different. Mm-hmm. Their art layout is different. And then and the way that they that that culture would communicate with art would be different. Um at least at that time, than what they may communicate now or the way Western culture communicates. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. That was Michael Dre. I think I think we have uh, just one more, right? Let's see. Two more, maybe. Yeah. Stephen Scharf. We haven't done this one yet. Yeah. Steven. Yeah. This is one of the images that I that I was going to do a quick demo on and play with a little bit. Oh, um, okay. You want me to bring it up on your? Screen? Yeah. 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 Go ahead and bring it up, and then we can chat about it while we're while we're doing it. Um, it just it, basically what this is just going to show is just going to demo some techniques of uh, removing reflections or noise or contrasts or things like that. I love the image, by the way. Um, such a beautiful toned image, and I love that silver. One of the things is I think that this image was probably taken in a museum. And then the background was in, you know, to be blocked out. So I know that Stephen made a comment that he still has work to do on it, but that's, you know, that's, that's cool. So what I would do is on an image like this is I would put in a levels layer, mm-hmm. right? So you come down here, you would choose levels. I would put the levels layer in there. And then what you want to do is, is grab that center arrow and see if I slide that to the left, all of a sudden, all that background starts to show up. All the way around. So oh, if you really, wow, yeah. yeah. So if you really wanted to mask it out, so then what you would do is when you're on your, on your background or actually on your image, and I'm just going to grab, use a clone brush, I'm just going to get rid of that. Then I can actually see. And you're doing that. So you're using the levels layer to reveal that stuff, but you're actually editing on the actual image layer. Yeah. Okay. Because because what nothing is more frustrating than actually taking an image spending a lot of time on it and then you print it and something that you thought you would cloned out is is you can see the tracks right because it's near black and you might not see it so even though if i turn this off this layer off you almost can't see the stuff that i removed it's clearly there and it could very easily show up in a print Mm -hmm. so this is really and I've done that. It's cost me thousands of dollars. Really? So yeah, wow. printing very large uh, images, and then you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. that wasn't actually black. So huh, that's really that's tip. it. Really good tip. What do you think about this shot compositionally? 
You know, compositionally, I, I wish it was a little tighter on the left. I don't know why we have that negative space. I feel like this this type of image um, would look so good. You know, oh, right screen. There we go. Okay. Yeah, right in there. Just really right in there. Something like something like that. Because mm -hmm. um, it creates that tension when it's kind of coming into that lower left corner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but one of the other things I was going to show really quick was you know, getting rid of some of these highlights and these reflections in an object like this. I'm turning them on and off so you can kind of see uh, what we've done. And for the most part, it's it's really easy. It's just about using your clone brush with darken and lighten. And you can use your Band-Aid tool. So like these little specular highlights, like it's on the fender right there. Mm -hmm. So I'll use the, the Band-Aid tool and I'll go to darken. And the reason that I go to darken and not normal is that if there's a texture, oops, I'm pushing too many buttons. If there's a texture in there, where's my layer? There it is. There you go. Um, let me put that at the top and turn all this other stuff off. There we go. That if there's a texture in there and I just do darken, it keeps the texture, but it only fills, you know, um, where the highlights are, right? So like you can see down here, on the lower right, like there's like some kind of reflection in there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to disrupt the pattern or the grain, if you will, or the noise pattern that's there. So I'm just going to darken because that's really what the difference is, right? Like yeah. these specular highlights are just lighter and yep. that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Really, really clean. Just kind of really I would nice. I would come around, just clean some of those up. I want to see I want to see uh, Stephen Sharp. I know you're listening and watching. I want to see um, you, the final version of this, you know, after you have done your retouching. And I'm curious to know if you could comment on the image or in the, in the community, were you going to use this technique um, when you did the final retouch? Yeah, there's, there's so many ways to do this, but really this is, this is like the predominance of editing an image is just using highlight and shadows or darken and lighten um, uh, modes. Yeah. So even like fixing this grill, just a layer stamp and just a regular clone stamp tool and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna darken it, and that's it. You just make sure they're aligned, and you just go through and be very very patient, and you can remove that that reflection at whatever level you want. Whether you want to remove it entirely or you want to remove it just a little bit, nice. um, it really creates some nice smooth body lines. But that's it. I mean, this is this is a this is just a, a fantastic image. I love the perspection, the perspective, uh, the wide angle lens. I think is perfect on this image. What would you, know, you do? A, what would you do with regarding that the I'm assuming this car has white walls on it, so that the front left tire is just bright. Yeah, would you knock that down a bit. I I would. You know, that was one of the things that I that I actually played with. Um, which which image was it? Or maybe oh maybe it's on this layer. See how I knocked it down. So basically, what I did is I created a layer, and we'll just mm -hmm. go ahead and do that really quick. So I just created a layer, and I went to my <clears throat> my clone stamp tool, and I changed the mode to darken. And I set my flow pretty low. I always keep the flow really low so I can brush things in. Mm -hmm. And I just picked right next to it. And I just I just took my time and just painted over it. it and build up, yeah. To painted it over it again. It. Oop, I got to be on layers and below. Yeah, there we go. Now, if you notice that because I'm using the flow, it doesn't come across even. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is... <clears throat> Change your flow to 100% and change your opacity down. Maybe like, we'll just do maybe like 10%. So then I don't have to worry about actually brushing it. I can just go over it as many times as I want. And every time I go over it, it adds another 10 or 15%. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And this is one of those things where it's a it's a subject that is confusing in the image, like we don't really know where it goes. So maybe remove it entirely if it doesn't really tell the story properly, mm -hmm. like if it doesn't if it doesn't fit. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because it is so bright, it's very dramatic. But other than that, I mean, it's it's just it's it's wonderful. And it, you know, being shot in a museum, you don't have ultimate control right. over your light and the light sources and the reflections. So you kind of got to get in there and futz with it a little bit and do it to it, do it to it. All right. Steven Scharf. Good work, man. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, let's see the, the final when you're done with it. I'm curious. Yes. All right. And the last shot. Is I think from... you're still sharing my screen. Oh yeah. Let me switch over. 
There we go. There we go. All right. The last shot is Rick. I think this may be the one of the first times that Rick has posted Rick Kilboy. Yeah, this is such a fun image. Um, I love that uh, that reflection in the water and the stump. I mean, that's what really draws me in is is that right there. The background and stuff isn't isn't so much of an interest. Mm -hmm. So I I would probably crop this um, and then do some Which dodging. Way? Like we crop in tighter on the stump or you know, go vertical, go horizontal, go horizontal. Mm -hmm. I think I would probably crop out that that background, the hills. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, maybe take half or two thirds of the vertical sky out. It's not really adding, or the vertical image. It's not really adding to the image. Mm -hmm. um, and then just do some dodging on the stump. You know, bring that stump up a little bit. Make him pop out of there, right? Yeah. And then, you know, this isn't something that we could do now, but when you're shooting the image, you got to really think like, do I want my subject to be that tight to the left side of my frame? Uh -huh. um, because the image is square, I'm assuming that it was probably cropped. So maybe there's more space on the left. So I think that if we had more space on the left, crop it in a little bit tighter, I think we're going to tell a better story. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit tight on the left side of the frame. Right. Yeah, I dig it. Cool. All right, Rick. Thank you for submitting that image. I think that is the last shot. It's going to Oh no, this is the last shot. Look at this. Water crash. Yeah, William Bannock. I like this He's shot. These are great. Yeah, these are these are great. These are not as easy to do. I mean, there's there's machines, you know, there's mechanisms that help you get the crashes just right, but you got to get the the lighting and the perspective and the focus and yeah, these are these are great. I love that that separation in the stream right in the middle. Not so much the crash at the top, but mm -hmm. that left stream with the bubble and the two dots connected to the stream, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know who does a lot of cool shots like this? Um, God, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, PhotoG.com. PhotoGY.com. PhotoG. Hmm. He does a lot of, he, and he does tutorials on how to do this stuff too. It's really, really interesting. And yeah, like you said, it, looking at those tutorials, this is not trivial to do. Uh, once you understand how and what you're doing, it becomes a, an exercise in repetition to get the right shot. But getting things set up is 90% of the battle here. <laughs> right. So in, in an image like this, I struggle with that extra splash on the lower right corner because I feel like it really throws off the balance of the image. So, And, I, and I've done these too. And, and you really got to decide, like, what do I leave in the image and what do I take out? So some of the water droplets, I like to remove them because I don't think that they tell a story. I don't think they're really part of the image. So there's one way up at the top. There's a bunch off to the right mm -hmm. um, on the lower right. And then that last little stream on the right, I might take that guy out. Um, the last one on the right side? Yeah, the short one. The little one down at the bottom? That's part of the story, though, because I think his caption had something about this is mother and son, and, you know, well, it's sort of looking at it. Yeah, but, so, what, I mean, but I don't have the caption, so what I was going to say is, if you're going to leave it there, then we need we need to center the two subjects. Oh, as a, I see what as you're a, saying. Yeah. Right, as opposed to a lot of negative space on the left and super tight on the right. So if you want to keep it, um, I think we need to balance the two subjects and I love the two of them, but if it was going to stay with this particular crop or this format with the space on the left, I would probably take that out. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I like this. I like this. I'm staring at it. I'm getting lost in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Yeah. They take a long time. They take a long time to set up and a long time to shoot and a long time to edit. And yeah, but one of the cool things the because the, the background is solid color, um, removing elements or even yeah uh, duplicating elements is uh easier right yeah very easy yeah very simple cool all right thank you william for that and that's it that's our last shot all right so what do you think you have a favorite out of the bunch oh i do i do i think it's um I think it's going to be Alicia's. I think Alicia's is my favorite. I'm yeah. not sure what you picked. That's but... my favorite. That's my favorite. Yeah. So this one right here. Yeah. I love that. I just, I love the abstractness of that. And then those colors that are in the sky, the, uh, the pastel swirls 
and I like how the I like how the highlight is behind the trees. Oh God, <laughs> look at you! <laughs> oh man, I can't help it. I gotta do it. There you go. Oh, there you go. Go. Tom Bosley. Here you oh. go. <laughs> you could have picked it from some some Guardians of the Galaxy, but you picked Tom Bosley. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> hey, you know, come on, got to be unpredictable. <laughs> I love that. Great job. Great job, Alicia. Great yeah. job. Yeah, good work. Very good work. I dig it. All right. So what's our uh what's our next week's topic, do you think? Ah uh, I I thought it would be fun to pick toys. 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 Mm. Now this is gonna be really easy for Freddie. <laughs> I know. And Freddie's like, oh piece of cake. <laughs> no, but Freddie, you gotta think out of the box. You can't just do something predictable. It's gotta be something out of the toy box, buddy. <laughs> so. Which, which really, toys are are really sort of a big uh, a genre because you could consider your cameras toys. You could, you know, looking at your kids' toys or Legos toys, or in in Freddie's case, not his kids' toys, they're his toys, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really a it's really a, a wide berth on the genre, but I, I think that it's I think that it's going to be fun. And God, look at what everybody did for. Um, minimalism. minimalism. Holy cow. What, what Jeez, great, it's what so a great good. Group. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. They did good. They good. All right. All right, cool. All right, so we're good. I think we're good for this. This, uh, what was this? 103. So 104, folks, is toys. Yep. 104. So, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines on the toy shots. Let's see what you got. <laughs> um, I'm excited and a little worried. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what we get. We'll see what we get. I'm excited. Yep, yep. It's all good. It's all good. Good stuff. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you for that. I'm off to another yeah. appointment, and uh, I'll see you right here. Actually, I'll see you on the critique, right? So, oh, not the critique. The, the mixer. mixer. The mixer. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I those think are I, blast. I think I'll be home this time. I won't be at a wedding. <laughs> yeah, a wedding or running around the country or doing yeah, the stuff. Yeah, yep. That's true. Yeah. Cool. All right. I will see you there. Thanks a lot. I appreciate all right. This. This is Twitter.